on a sunny day in Miami, ABC Sports and the College Football Association today present a Big East matchup featuring the 13th ranked Virginia Tech Hokies and the 5th ranked Miami Hurricanes. We're at the corner of 6th Street and 16th Avenue in Miami, Florida, and there's no time like showtime in Miami. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Mark Jones in the house, and welcome to the 12th meeting between these two teams. Now, this is a game that has been highly anticipated and hotly debated for a long time. Let's take a look at the Big East standings. A win for Miami today, and coupled with a win in Syracuse next week, would pretty much guarantee them a conference title. Meanwhile, a win for Virginia Tech today, they would be tied with Miami for second place in the conference. Now, my partner this afternoon, as always, is Tim Brandt. Tim, we're looking at two teams today peaking at just the right time. I don't we? think there's any question about it, Mark. Two teams that are really playing well. You know, when Virginia Tech started the first month, it was the defense that carried the Hokies because the offense was out of sync. But now they're on fire, mainly because of Antonio Freeman, who has 19 catches over the last four games. And behind him, Maurice DeShazo, who has a tremendous amount of ability, both mobility and escapability. He'll put pressures on the corner. But hold on, folks. They're going against one of the toughest defenses in the country in Miami, led by All-American Warren Sapp. Take a look at this guy because, folks, he he is special. If there is a concern, it's with the kicker, Dane Pruitt. Now, normally very consistent, but last week he missed three extra points. So that obviously is a concern, but these are four guys to watch today. There'll be four key players in the game. And Tim, Miami missing a key cog in their offensive machinery. And for more on that, we're going to go downstairs right now to Dean Blevins. Dean? Thank you, Mark. I'm joined by James Stewart, the outstanding fullback who will not be playing today, a sprained ankle keeping you out. This hokey defense I'm sure you'd love to go up against. Yeah, I, you know, it's bad that I can't get in there and do my thing. I'm pretty sure that the offense is good in and execute plays and do the things they have to do to come out with a victory at the end of the day. Who's taking the load for you? People taking the load for me is uh, Larry Jones, Danielle Ferguson, and uh, Al Shipman. I'm, I'm quite sure they're going to do a great job. and. Uh, I'm just going to be pulling for them all the way. All right, get well. Back to the booth. Virginia Tech has never defeated Miami. Never. But they say they are poised and ready for the big breakthrough game this afternoon. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. Back in Miami, Florida, I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. Miami has won the toss, but they have decided to defer. So Dane Pruitt will kick it off. And back deep is Brian Still, number 17 for the Hokies. Miami will go on defense to start the game. The Hurricanes coming into the game with an overall record of 5-1. Virginia Tech, meanwhile, is 7-1. And, and as we mentioned, this is a very pivotal game for both teams in the Big East. 88 degrees, sunny, 60% humidity, a perfect day for football. Virginia Tech special teams have been outstanding lately. This one will go out of bounds, and the Hokies will start off on the 35-yard line. A look at Frank Beamer, the head coach, in his eighth season at the helm of his alma mater. He is 0-3 lifetime against the Hurricanes. He says that if you beat Miami, you move into a different stratosphere and status. Across on the other sideline is Derek Tennis Erickson in his sixth year at Miami, 58-8 overall, outstanding record. He says that it's a short trip from the penthouse to the outhouse, and he has to get his team ready every single week. Just because you're Miami doesn't mean you just put on the uniform and win. Dwayne Thomas is the lone back behind Maurice DeShazo on first and 10. In the flat, it's Thomas. And he's brought down and brought down hard at the 38-yard line. Tim, what are some of the important things in the equation of success today? Well, I think both teams have to try to play mistake-free football, and they've done that quite well up to this point of the season. But if you take a look at some of the keys today, we'll tell you Virginia Tech really needs early success against Miami playing here at the Orange Bowl. They have to prevent the big plays. Nobody's better at that than Miami hitting and striking deep. Miami's success on first down, they tell us they want to bring up second and short. And the ability to run the ball against Virginia Tech, which very few teams have been able to do. DeShazo to throw again on second down, hits Thomas again. And Thomas steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line. He'll be about two yards short of a first down. Now, here's a look at the starting quarterback. It's Maurice DeShazo. He has gone through a major change in the last three games. Seven interceptions in the first five, none in the last three. Playing with a lot more confidence now, too, stepping up, and he's in command. Dwayne Thomas playing in his second consecutive game after missing three games after spraining an ankle against West Virginia. 
He was a 1,000-yard rusher a year ago with 11 touchdowns. Right now, DeShazo two for two, and he's got that early success. Tim, two yards to go for first down. Third and two, three wideouts in. DeShazo, three-step drop, almost intercepted by Ray Lewis, the sophomore. It was in his arms, and I'm not even sure he believed it. Well, there was double coverage there. That was a bad decision by DeShazo because Jermaine Holmes was wide open in the flat. Watch this now. He throws into the hook zone right here where the linebacker and DB are. Boom, bad call. Look at the top of your screen. Holmes, number 82, wide open. Bad decision. Could have had the first. Holmes was all conference, all freshman last year. Robbie Colley standing on his own 30-yard line set to punt. Jamie German, a dangerous punt returner, back deep for the Canes. But this one will bounce well inside the 20 and keep going and going and going. Down to the 10-yard line, a 47-yard punt, about 15 of those yards coming on a roll. And in comes Frank Costa, the starting quarterback for the Hurricanes. Costa, 10 touchdown passes, 9 interceptions from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A look at the backs of the receivers now. Missing is James Stewart, as we mentioned at the top. Filling in for him is Larry Jones. Jones also big, strong, and fast. And Jones, just one of seven Joneses on this Miami roster. A 6'1", 240, and a senior. See a lot of this look from the Canes. Single back, three wide outs, and they throw a lot too. This is Jonathan Harris in the flat. Run out of bounds, roughed up at the 17-yard line. Pickup of about seven yards on first down. Let's take a look at the offensive line now for the Canes. A pretty good offensive line, a line that is starting to gel and get better game by game. They talk about this line developing into one of the best that they have ever had here in Miami. That's quite a compliment. The pivotal game for that line was against Florida State. They played extremely well. Casey Jones, another one of those Joneses in the Miami roster. He's the leader up front. You say seven Joneses. They play six different positions, and they're all from four different states. I'm the only one that doesn't have a uniform. Yeah, but you're not from the States. You're from Toronto. <laughs> It'll be second down and short. A handoff, and this Jones isn't going anywhere. Nice charge led by Hank Coleman, number six. Let's meet this Virginia Tech defensive unit now. Up front, Cornell Brown, Waverly Jackson, J.C. Price, and Coleman, the man in on the tackle. Linebackers led by George Del Rico. He leads the team with 88 tackles coming into the game. Simones and Brown also good compliments for him. Yarbrough Banks, Torian Gray, and Henley in the secondary. Mark, this is a blitzing defense as you look at Del Rico and Brown. Those are the guys that will come hard. But what they're trying to do today, they'll blitz, but they'll play zone, combination defenses, because they don't want to give up the big play. It is third and six. Three wide outs for the Hicanes. Costa, three-step drop, unloads. Complete to the near sideline and a first down for Miami. Jamie German making the reception going high in the air and he takes a bow. A 15-yard pickup for the first down. High risk, high reward defense, but oftentimes you get caught playing soft. Now watch this. There's no question Costa's going to the right. He never looks anywhere else. Actually throws off balance because the blitz is coming. I didn't think he had this ball, but obviously he did. The officials front and back were right there. Looked like he was bobbling it. Very, very dangerous player, Jamie German. Just a sophomore. Extremely quick. Great hands, tough body. And his first and 10 from the 29-yard line. Single back set once again. And off, off tackle. It's Jones one more time, has about five yards, tackled by J.C. Price. One of the things Miami's doing already and something they talked about doing at practice this week, Virginia Tech defensively moves a lot. They'll try to confuse you, give her different looks, what they call stem, move around. Miami's coming out and trying to go on a quick count to catch Virginia Tech out of position while they're moving and while they're trying to be salty and trying to be confusing. So they're trying to make Virginia Tech pay for that with quick counts. Got to be so careful defending Miami with that big play, quick strike capability. The blitzing, Costa looking for the hot receiver, and he overthrows Yatil Green. The redshirt freshman number 87, an incompletion by Costa. Look at what's happening in the Big East this afternoon. Pittsburgh huge over Temple. Boston College. Rebounding after that disappointing tie last week against Rutgers, 30-3. And Virginia, West Virginia big today. 
thought it was interesting, Mark, before the ball game when the Nebraska game was announced, people hear the buzz in the stadium. Hey, it's going to be Nebraska-Miami for the national championship right here in the Orange Bowl. Of course, Virginia Tech trying to win some credibility here today. A win over Miami would actually put them in the big time. It sure would. And their coach knows it, and that's a message that he has conveyed to his team the entire week. We'll be right back. We're just underway here in Miami. Back at the Orange Bowl, I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. We're just underway here in the first quarter. Miami with the ball, looking at third down and six. 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard. 12-17 remaining in the first period. Two wide outs to the top of your screen. A single back set. That's Jones in motion, Trent Jones. Blitz from the weak side and he put it on the ground. Miami recovers, but they'll have to punt. They came with some serious pressure that time. Oh, I don't think there was any question about it. They came hard with the blitz. Coleman was there first. This is a team we talked about loves to blitz. Ten different players have gotten sacks this year. They've got 27 sacks. They came off the corner. Coleman, number six. Bam, balls loose, fumble. Everybody's scrambling back to get it. You see Brown almost gets it. Miami comes up with it, but will have to punt. Big time play by Coleman, 6'2", 235 pounder. And in comes Mike Christie to punt. He's standing on his own two yard line. Folks, keep an eye on Antonio Freeman. He's a dangerous punt returner. He won't get a chance to return this one though. It bounces and it'll be down at the 44 yard line. So, Mike, very good field position for Mike, Virginia Tech. Mike Christie, the punter, is down. As soon as he punted, it looked like he pulled his groin. We'll have more on that when we come back. Stick around. CFA College Football and ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet. The cars and trucks 36 million people depend on every day. Genuine Chevrolet. Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. AT&T. We help put your world within reach. And Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. Well, bad news for the Miami Hurricanes. Their punter, Chrissy, Mike Chrissy, down with an injury. We'll get more on the injury from Dean Blevins in just a few moments. Right now, first and 10 for the Hokies in good field position. Dwayne Thomas goes off tackle left and can't find a seam. And downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, Mike Chrissy before the game said that he aggravated a groin injury in pregame warmups, and that's one area. We'll take a look at it on replay. If you're a punter, you do not want a groin injury. You don't want one anyway, but certainly not a punter. In excruciating pain for him, he will be replaced by Dane Pruitt. Let me tell you, Dane Pruitt has not kicked this year at all, but he was an all-state, all-metro punter in high school. Not much there on that play, but Dave Pruitt was warming up in the pregames trying to punt the ball, and he was not having a very good day. Now, we said he was an all-star in high school, has not punted this year, but he was struggling in pregame warm-ups. And, Tim, interesting to note that with Pruitt struggling already with his place-kicking duties, it's going to be interesting to see if the punting affects that further. There's a look at Pruitt taking a look at his teammate. Meanwhile... Maurice DeShazo with four wide receivers in on third down. Out of the shotgun. Has a man complete. Cornelius White with a first down at the 28-yard line. A big, busy day in college football. Penn State is busy. Let's get busy with John Saunders in New York. John? Mark, as you know, Nebraska has beaten Colorado, so Penn State looking to stay number one. Needs a big effort from this guy. Kajana Carter, 20 yards on a first down and 10. 7-0. The Nittany Lions have the lead. Mark. You know, Tim, with the loss by Colorado, I really think that Kajana Carter now becomes the favorite to win the Heisman. Oh, I agree. He's definitely one of the, the candidates that's up there to be uh, considered highly, and it depends, I, I feel, very strongly on how they end up. If they're number one, I think he does win it. And if he continues on this pace, word from our official sideline warning on the visitors that's the first sideline warning on the visitors next one he won't give him a warning he'll just throw a flag keeping Virginia Tech three yards off that sideline Terry Monk our man wearing the white cap this afternoon 
You know, that last play by Virginia Tech, the first down, was exactly what we talked about in the open, the escapability and mobility of DeShazo. He got outside, sap, and it was White that worked his way free, and they, they do that. You watch how these receivers will skate with the quarterback and readjust when he scrambles. Everybody talks about the Miami receivers, but the Hokies have a good crew of their own. Still in motion, they put it on the ground. And it appears as if the Hokies were fortunate enough to get it back. DeShazo knew he missed the snap, but he couldn't get back to the ball because big old Connedy 61 was in front of him. And Maurice was giving somebody an earful. Dwayne Thomas made the fumble recovery too. Yeah, Thomas gets it, but watch this. The ball's on the ground right now. is gonna try to get back to it. Now watch, here comes 61 is being pushed back into him. He's saying, hold it, I can't get it. And then here comes the recovery. So they lose a few yards. Lost one on the play. Second down at 11. Hand off to Dwayne Thomas. And Thomas gains about three yards and set up third down and long. Folks, Monday it's a Halloween party as Soldier Field becomes a house of horrors. But for who? The Packers hope to avoid a nightmare in Chicago as Reggie White, Sterling Sharp, and Green Bay take on the Bears live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC's Monday Night Football. Third down and nine. Four wideouts in for DeShazo again on third and long, and he goes down. Heavy pressure, and he's down at the 34-yard line. Ray Lewis making the initial hit. And that, in effect, may have pushed them out of field goal range, too. Well, I want to tell you something. They came like cannon fire. Watch this. Patrick Riley and Lewis came up untouched on the blitz. He tried to step up and beat it, but couldn't. Eventually had to go under it. No way to show mobility that way. And they worked on containment all week. They'll try to keep him between the tackles. It comes Robbie Cauley to punt. He had a nice one down inside the 10 last time. He'll try and pooch this one, but it goes five yards deep. 33-yard punt, and Miami will start off on its own 20-yard line. Nebraska with that huge win today over Colorado. Auburn still unbeaten under Terry Bowden. You know, Tim, Terry Bowden may lose, may, may be in the NFL before he actually loses a college game. He's one of the hot topics in being pursued by some NFL teams. He's on the list anyway. Absolutely. That's an amazing run he's had at Auburn when no one really expected it. That was a program that was down and a lot of people thought it would take a long time to recover with the sanctions. Miracle worker. Miami with its second possession of the game. 7.40 remaining in the first quarter. Zeros on the scoreboard. Costa, quick drop. Down the middle, incomplete. And a big collision at the 37-yard line. He tried to hit Chris T. Jones, but he overthrew him. Boy, and I want to tell you something. This secondary will tag you. Antonio Banks is one of the hardest hitters, number nine, that you'll see this year. Now, what he's doing is he's putting a tattoo on him right there and saying, hey, Jones, next time you come through here, have your head on the swivel. Be looking for number nine. I'm going to tattoo you. 7.36 remaining in the first quarter, second down and 10. And he's spreading the defense. A little counter play to Larry Jones. Nice tackle in the 23-yard line by Banks again, Tim. Exactly. Banks playing in that free safety. They give him a lot of leeway. He can play free back there. And I mean, folks, this guy, number nine, runs to the football. And he loves it when they say he's one of the toughest, hardest hitters that you'll find. You know, he was the MVP at last year's Independence Bowl. He is a very physical player. But more importantly, he puts himself in position to make the plays. We have two of the top defenses in the Big East Conference. Two of the top defenses in the country, period, this afternoon. Four wideouts in for the Kings. Costa completes it to Jonathan Harris at the 27-yard line, but he's short of the first down, so they'll have to punt again. Hey, I want to tell you something. Who made the tackle? Del Rico <laughs> stabbed. 
Costa when he released the ball. And then, of course, Banks made the tackle. But Costa's coming off. He knows he was tattooed. There's Banks, three plays in a row. Costa, number 11. He says, who was that that hit me? So that was 41. And in comes Dane Pruitt for his first punt of the year. Again, we tell you, he was an all-star in high school punting and place kicking, but he was shaky in warm-ups. He handles the snap. Gets up. Hey, who says he hasn't punted in a while? Look at this. Freeman back at his own 24. Looking for a few blocks. He goes mainly east-west instead of north-south. And he's so brought much down. for warm-ups. Yeah, I guess it worked. Anything in the air that long should have a flight attendant on it. We'll be back. Back in Miami, Florida, it can safely be said that Pruitt can do it. That last punt going 49 yards. You think he was happy about it? I'll tell you what, he was having flashbacks to when he was an all-star punter in high school. Watch this. Hey, coach, how was that? Take it. 49 yards. Now, you guys go out and cover it. I'll put it up there. You come down and cover it. Dane Pruitt. Out of Birmingham, Alabama. Looks like a linebacker. Pretty heavy set. Virginia Tech with good field position once again. Starting on the 36. Quick hitter and a drop by number 82, Jermaine Holmes. He is the team's leading receiver with respect to receptions, not yardage. You won't see that happen too often. Holmes, a junior, 6'1", 174 pounds. You know what's surprising? Antonio Freeman, we talked 19 catches in the last four games, but Holmes is the leading receiver right now with 28. I missed three or more receptions in every game for that guy. And there's Antonio. Bit of a homecoming for him. He's from St. Petersburg, Florida. Not too far away. Tommy Edwards now in a tailback. Edwards runs it out to the 38-yard line, tackled by Rohan Marley, who comes up limping. He's a hard hitter, an important part of this Miami defense. Yeah, he really is, and they freed some things up for him in this particular game. I mean, they've actually game plan to turn Rohan loose on some stunts and blitzes to, to make him make Virginia Tech pay. So now Burgess will come in and take his place, but they alternate game to game anyway. It's third down and seven for the Hokies. Holmes in motion. Shazel stands in the pocket, delivers complete. But it's going to be an important spot. He will be far short of the first down. Freeman made the catch. It was thrown behind him. Made a great catch, but it's short. And the fans here, over 50,000 of them, voiced their collective appreciation for that defensive stand. Just a tremendously sunny day, a hot day here in Miami. Robbie Colley punting from his own 28. German standing on his 20. Colley shanks this one, a poor punt that's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A 23-yard boot by Robbie Colley, far below his average. That was a weird punt. It wasn't like he totally missed it because he got great height on it, good hang time, just didn't go anywhere. Went off to the side and out of bounds. Look at Marley as they continue to work on him, but that punt now gives Miami good field position at the 35. Looking at it, working on his knee, it looks like. Rohan Marley, you saw his picture moments ago. He had the clean-shaven head, but right now he is adorned with those familiar dreadlocks. Of course, if you don't already know, he is the son of the late Bob Marley, reggae singer from Jamaica. Daniel Ferguson now in a tailback for the Canes. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. They hand it off to Ferguson, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage. Number 44, Ken Brown, and number 59, J.C. Price said hello. I want to tell you something about J.C. Price, boy. That's just the way they draw it up. Tuck the tail, sky the eyes, and drive. Put that hat right under his chin and take him down. Nicely done by J.C. Price, a 6'3", 283-pounder out of Dunkirk, Maryland. The J.C. stands for just coming on that play. Approaching four minutes to play in the first quarter, Miami on its third possession of the ball game. Toss to the pass. In the hook zone, it's dropped by Chris Jones, and he can't believe it himself. We've seen two of each respective team's reliable receivers drop passes, and Costa's bewildered, too. Well, Virginia Tech is in a zone defense this time. They had the right call, but watch this. 
He finds the open seam in the zone, goes up and turns his head before he has the catch. He's got to make that catch. They didn't come with the blitz that time. They gave him time to throw. Miami doing a good job of spreading the defense thin with wide formations. Look at that, sideline to sideline. Here they come on third and 10. Harris in motion, Hokies blitzing. Costa delivers to Jones again. He fumbles it, Harris recovers, and Miami will still have the first down. An 18-yard pickup after all is said and done. The tackle was made by Brandon Simones. Great job by Miami to pick up the blitz. They're coming, top of the screen blitz, bottom of the screen trips. They run them off, then come back. Boy, that's nicely done by Jones, who comes back to meet the ball at midfield. Now watch, they strip it, boom. Everybody's heads up, get to the football, and it's covered quickly by Jamie German. An alert play by German, first and 10. Little play action by Costa. To the near side of the field, and it's incomplete. Intended for Util Green. Costa, four of eight so far for a total of 43 yards, but in fairness to him, he's had a drop. Take a look at the matchup today defensively, and you'll see both teams very strong defensively. One, two, as a matter of fact, in the Big East, Miami being number one. But I want you to go down to points allowed. They both allow the exact same number of points, and they get after you, too, with the quarterback six, sacks. Interesting matchup. And those are the ball on the 47-yard line. Four wideouts in for the Canes. The flanker screen to German. You know what? Frank Costa must be thinking, is this a conspiracy or what? He can't believe it. Two guys now have dropped passes on him. Dean Blevins, your former quarterback, I know you probably wouldn't like that either. Well, Tim, you bring up a good point about the conspiracy theory, but also he's, he's pumped up. I mean, he really wants to produce, especially when he has a lot of pressure on him. The balls that have not been dropped have been high ones, and that comes from having too much adrenaline. He has had wide open receivers. We'll see if he can calm down. I'll tell you something else. Give the defense a lot of credit here because they've got guys looking around because it's, it's a defense that's been hitting guys. They're looking for that hitter faster than they are the ball. A good point. Hokies coming with the blitz. Costa showing his capability. Man's got some foot speed, folks. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line under heavy pressure. He outran three guys to get to safe territory. J.C. Price wondering how he got away. He thought he had him. Del Rico was playing a game that came on the blitz up the middle. Watch this. Watch the middle. You're bringing Banks. You're bringing the blitz. Here comes Del Rico. Boom. 41 misses him. Then here comes Price. Price says, I've got him. Whoops. He goes around him. Nicely done by Costa, but that's a play Virginia Tech really thought they had the sack. Probably should have. Still a punting down. In comes Dane Pruitt. He's going to punt from his own 42. Let's see what kind of finesse he has on punting. This will be his second. Antonio Freeman setting back deep. See if he can get it inside the 20. This one will be down right near the five yard line at the three. Dane Pruitt, as if he's been doing it his entire life. There is a flag down. This may be offsides by Virginia Tech. Had guys jumping around. It was a little mix up. Let's go downstairs and see. Illegal formation on the offense. Oh, it's against Miami. So they'll back him up even more. Virginia Tech will make a punt because the Hokies want to get a return out of this and certainly don't want that field position inside the five. But Dennis Erickson irate at that penalty and infraction. You know, it's been the Miami special teams that have been a little bit shaky. I mean, we talked about the three missed extra points last week, a couple of penalties that have taken them back. That's a concern. On the other side of the field, Virginia Tech's special teams have been outstanding, probably the best unit on the entire Hokie team. And Antonio Freeman, the man who was standing on his own 10-yard line last week, had over 160 yards in punt returns. 164. You know, that's big. He was named the Big East Conference's Special Teams Player of the Week for his performance last week against Pitt. A high snap, and it's blocked. The Hokies block the punt. And they will get the ball at the 30-yard line. Brian Still 
came up with the ball after the block. Number 17, Brian Still recovered it after the block. Here's another look at it. Watch this, high snap set it up as you said. Boy, that's a great block. They just keep coming through. Michael Williams got up there first. You know, it's uncanny. We were just talking about the special teams, how well they've been playing. They have the knack of coming up with blocks. They've done it on field goals. They've done it on punts. And here again, they've got great field position because of that big play. On first and 10, Dwayne Thomas down to the 24-yard line. And Dean Blevins, what's up down there? Well, Tremaine Mack was the deep snapper. He has had some problems. He has been suspended from this club. The new deep snapper, number 59, is a true freshman, Jeffrey Taylor. And if there is an advantage for Virginia Tech today, it would be in special teams and already one critical mistake from Miami. Yeah, that snapper position, the deep snapper spot, so critical. You can win or lose games for you. Second down and four. Hand off to Dwayne Thomas. Pounding his way down to the 20-yard line, brought down by Ray Lewis. I'll tell you something else, too, with Chrissy going out. You know, he's done some of the holding on extra points and field goals. That could be a problem. And Collins, I understand, will hold now for kicks. So there's a change there. Special teams continue to fall apart for Miami. Now look at Dwayne Thomas, Tim. Came back last week running for 82 yards on 14 carries and a couple of touchdowns against Pitt after missing a couple of games. Yeah, he's got a five-yard average. He's a talent. Right in motion. Thomas. Nothing doing on the right side. On third and one, they will not pick up the first down. Ray Lewis, the sophomore, once again, making the stop. Now Frank Beamer's got a decision to make. Do you go for it or do you try a field goal? I'd try a field goal. We saw him nailing these things from 54 yards warming up. And in comes Ryan Williams. Now let me tell you about Ryan Williams. He's perfect inside the 40. In pregame warmups, he was hitting them from beyond 50. This will be 39 yards. You can see his foot. He lost half of his foot in a childhood accident. He has a strong leg, and he demonstrates it right here. That thing could have gone 50. Williams nails it, and the Hokies take a 3 to nothing lead on that 38-yard field goal. And again, it's special teams that makes the big difference for Virginia Tech. Boy, watch Williams now. You talk about a strong leg. You know, he missed the Boston College game with a separated shoulder, scored 10 points against West Virginia, nine points against Pitt last week. All-time Tech scoring leader, adds three more here from 39 yards, and he is still perfect this year from inside the 40. And as we said, Tim, important that the Hokies have a little bit of early success here at the Orange Bowl against Miami. They jump out to a three to nothing lead. We have less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Williams wears an NCAA approved boot. And I'm sure that Frank Beamer doesn't care what kind of shoe he wears as long as it works. And he ends up kicking them through the uprights. Boy, Dennis Erickson, he has an awfully solid program here on the field. Miami has won 41 of its last 44 regular season games. And they're 11 and 0 against Virginia Tech. Well, next Saturday at 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central on ABC, Jack Nicklaus and an elite field meet in Hawaii as we begin coverage of the Lincoln Mercury Kapalua International. Then at 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central on ABC's college football, number five Miami meets Syracuse. A huge game in the Big East. And there's a Big Ten game and a Pac-10 game. Check your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. At Leo Larson, set to kick off from the 35-yard line in German, is back deep along with Al Shipman for Miami. This will be German at the goal line. Andy German out to the 21 yard line and was brought to an abrupt halt. Miami still hasn't scored and they have not gone a quarter without scoring since that date, since 93. 19 quarters. Give a lot of credit to the Virginia Tech defense doing a great job with the game plan here thus far against the Hurricanes. Already Virginia Tech has done better than it did last year. 
against Miami. They only scored two points. Here they've got three on the board already. Special teams playing well, and the defense flying around like wild men. 52 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Hokies lead 3 to nothing. Miami with a total of just 33 yards of offense so far. Little play action by Costa. And he's going up top to German. It's picked off. That thing hung up there forever. Number 24, William Yarbrough made the pick. What great rotation by the defense. Yarbrough, the cornerback, rotated to help the safety. Now let me tell you, out of his 10 touchdown passes, only three have not been 49 yards or longer. They love to go after the big play. Now watch Yarborough, bottom of your screen, use his body, shield off German, and make the interception. Folks, that's big time, but Banks and Yarborough had great coverage. Now watch the hit Costa takes. Even after he throws it, he's being thrown and slammed. So far, you've got to love this Virginia Tech defense if you're a football fan. They're exciting. Right now it's the offense with the ball, still in motion. Dwayne Thomas down to the 29-yard line. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. And for the 24th year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. We have 22 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Frank Costa of Miami phoning upstairs, trying to find out exactly what happened on that last interception. You know, it doesn't take long for Costa to hear booze here at the Orange Bowl, and sometimes it's a little unfair to him. Well, and you know, they don't hesitate to put in Ryan Collins either. I mean, he played last week, the week before. They put him in. They like to put him in in goal line situations, but that's it. Miami shut out in the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl. On a sunny afternoon in Miami, the Hokies have never won against them, but this might be the time. This will be the first play of the second quarter. Virginia Tech leading Miami three to nothing. Maurice DeShazo, the starting quarterback at the helm. Holmes in motion. On second and nine, DeShazo tipped and almost intercepted. He tried to find his tight end, Brian Jennings, but it's incomplete. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Dean? Guys, you mentioned Marley a moment ago. Here he is, has eyes on his right knee. Excuse us, please. Uh, he, he is telling his teammates he will not return. He is not sure exactly what it is. He definitely will not return. We'll take another look at it. James Burgess will replace him at linebacker. Rohan Marley, a big hitter, injured on that play. It seemed harmless. Shazo out of the shotgun on third and long. Sacked at the 24, the second sack of the afternoon for the Canes. Penny Holmes lowering the boom. That's a play DeShazo has to throw it away, but I don't think he felt that Holmes could catch him. And if he could, wouldn't make the tackle. Either had too much confidence in himself or he made a mental error. He cannot take that sack. He's got to either throw it away or he's got to get away from him, one of the two. You know, Kenny Holmes playing really well, Tim. And Dennis Erickson told us yesterday that, you know, Warren Sapp is the guy who gets most of the attention, but Holmes has done outstanding this year. Here's Colley with the punt. German lets it bounce to the 34. And that's where the Hurricanes will start on offense. Holmes with the sack. Miami trails by three. Take a look at the first quarter statistics. Immediately go to Miami's side of the ledger and come down minus 10 yards rushing which shows you that Virginia Tech's defense has been outstanding. Now, when Miami rushes for 150 yards, the Canes have won 40 in a row. Well, now they've got minus 10. Now go down, they've got one turnover, plus they've had a punt blocked. So right now, it's all Virginia Tech. Frank Costa, the son of Frank and Rosemary Costa, delivers the strike on first 10 to Harris, and Jonathan Harris makes a nice move out to the 47-yard line. He's a quick little guy at 5'9", 170 pounds, and he picks up 13 yards and a first down. William Yarbrough making the tackle. Boy, that's a nicely designed play and very well executed by Harris, number three. 
He's only 5'9", 170 pounds, but he's got good speed, tough body, soft hands. He's an excellent receiver. 40 receptions a year ago. They are really spreading the field and trying to make that Virginia Tech defense spread out and thin out to create air. Look, they're sideline to sideline again. First and 10 from the 47. Hand off to Larry Jones. Jones over midfield, down to the 49-yard line. Tim, you talk about spreading the field and what Miami wants to do offensively against Virginia Tech's defense. A lot of people talk about Virginia Tech's eight-man front and what they do, but you liken it to something old that really is something nothing new. Well, don't forget, Frank Beamer was a graduate assistant at the University of Maryland where he coached under Jerry Claiborne, who ran the wide tackle six defense. That's what this is, the wide tackle six, just taken to another level. Look at all those guys up front for Virginia Tech. And we have a flag down on second and seven. A quarterback can come up to the line against Virginia Tech and count forever, the men in the box. Dead ball foul, ball start on the offense. Remain second down. With that eight-man front, though, what you're doing is they what they what they do stem, what they call stemming, which gives you a different look. They'll drop some linebackers off. They'll bring the safety banks up. They'll give you different things. They'll come with the blitz. They'll take Del Rico and bring him outside and inside. I'm telling you, it's a defense that can move around, but it looks all the time like there are eight men up front. 12.50 to play in the first half. Three wideouts to the bottom of your screen on second and 12. to the pass in the hook zone and this time Cobra Chris T. Jones squeezes it tightly to pick up 19 yards and another hurricane first down the tackle made by Torian Gray boy this time Virginia Tech did not come with a blitz they just came with the normal rush they were in a basic zone and that guy right there Jones found the area between Ken Brown the linebacker and Torian Gray the rover Came Caught in. it right in between them. He came into the game with a total of 409 yards receiving. Tops on the team. Nose of the ball on the 35-yard line. The Hurricanes have yet to score. Larry Jones, the single back. Quick drop and incomplete to the wide side of the field intended for A.C. Tellison. A big target at 6'4". Well, I tell you what, had he caught it, that could have been trouble, big trouble. He got outside the cornerback, Yarborough. Tell us, you know, he averages over 20 yards a catch. He is extremely dangerous. And that's where the Miami Hurricanes are a lot better than they were a year ago at the receiver position, and which kind of explains why they've got all those big plays. Look at his size, too, 6'4", 212. Once you get him out there, not only is he hard to bring down, but it's a mismatch over shorter cornerbacks. It's almost like basketball. You can post a guy up. Get him high, the alley -oop. A two tight end formation this time. Costa backside pressure he's down. A sack by Simone's, the second one of the afternoon, and this puts Miami way back at the 46 yard line. Completely untouched. Simone has surprised him. That's his fifth sack of the year. He's the third leading tackler. He's having a great year. Honor student marketing major. Watch this guy. Untouched. They don't pick up the blitz. Costa never even saw him coming. He was in what they call a nine technique. Outside everybody, came from the backside. Nobody picked him up. Bingo, sack, big time play. Simone, 21. Simone's the Big East Defensive Player of the Week. Last week, caused two fumbles, had three sacks last week against Pitt. They say he's a better student than he is ball player, marketing major. Third down and Fort Lauderdale to go. 21. Look at this, everybody out wide. Costa looking up top again. Oh, that's a flag, face guarding. No question about that. Jamie German was the intended receiver, but number 14, Torian Gray, didn't even bother to look back at the ball. No, I think it was Larry Green, wasn't it? Boy, I don't know. We'll find out. But watch this, face guarding all the way. It's not even close. That is Gray, look at this. Torian Gray, 14, he's not even looking back. He's doing it right in front of the back, Judge. Are you kidding me? Come on, Torian, you're an outstanding player. He is Pass a good interference player. on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Goes down. 
You know, he's as versatile as you'll ever see, Torian Gray. I mean, he's played linebacker, safety. He's a cover guy, stunt guy. Makes the calls back there. He's a smart player. But this time, I mean, German just took him to school, dropped some science on him. He's back there, never looked back. That's what happens when you've got all those speedy receivers. It strikes a little fear in your heart. And it's a first down. This is where that pass interference rule helps them, you know? But it's either 5 or 15. It's not down at this spot. It's not down by the goal line. 11.05 remaining in the first half. Miami trailing by three. A two tight end set this time for the Kings. Single back is Larry Jones. This is Jones. Off left tackle down to the 27 yard line, picks up about four. John Saunders, how impressive are the Penn State Nittany Lions this afternoon? Just as impressive as Kajana Carter is, because here's his second touchdown of the game. This from just a yard out as he takes it around the left side. 14 zip, the Nittany Lions lead, Mark. All right, back here it's three to nothing. Kajana Carter. Earning a few more Heisman votes as we speak. John the name out of a cartoon. He's for real. No animation there. Uh-uh. The sprint draw. Jones rocked out at the 23-yard line. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down. The tackle made by Simones again, and J.C. Price was also in the neighborhood. You know, for a defense to be special, it needs to be dominant in the middle and impact players, speed guys. Tech has three of them, and Cornell Brown, who has five sacks, and Ken Brown, and Antonio Banks. But we talked about this defense being based on the wide tackle six principle taken to the next step. It is based on speed, reading and stunning upfield rather than sideways. Much more aggressive. Miami, minus 11 yards rushing. Third down and three. Two tight end formation. Quick drop to the sideline. And it's complete for the first down at the 15. A nice timing pattern that time. T. Jones, Chris T. Jones, a.k.a. Cobra, making the reception. He now has three catches for a total of 45 yards. He's the hot receiver, but I want you to watch number seven in white backpedaling, playing way too soft. He's got to come up right now on Jones, and he's not. He's giving him too much leeway. He can't read, react recover that quickly when he gives that much distance between he and the receiver. Tim, that was a tough catch, too, because Jones had to reach behind him. He's just a freshman, too. He'll be around a while. This is Larry Jones with a flag down at the 12, and Jones down at the 2. Don't ever stop when the whistle blows and the flag's down if the play's still alive. If they want you to stop, they'll keep blowing that whistle. We'll have to sort this one out. Maybe against the Hokies. Let's see. Offsides, defense, penalties declined, first and go. Yeah, see, the Hokies heard that whistle or saw the flag anyway. They stopped. I don't think there was a whistle, but they saw the flags and they stopped. The play continued. That's a free play. You got to stop him now. They stopped. The runner kept going, got all the way down inside the five, so they just declined it. Another now watch this. You'll be able to see. There's the penalty. Now watch this. Flags fly. Everybody else stopped. See how they stopped? They got a free one and took advantage of it. <laughs> Jones again. He's in the house. Touchdown, Canes. Very methodical drive capped by that Larry Jones touchdown run. And Larry, Miami takes a 6-3 lead. Larry Jones taking the place of James Stewart. He has an ankle sprain. Jones is a hammer guy. You saw the power he had to pull his way into the end zone. 6'1", 240 pounds. Load. Now let's take a look at this extra point attempt. They've struggled with this over the last little while. I'll tell you, Mike Christie's holding and Pruitt kind of barely hooks it inside that left upright. Didn't have much room to spare. Chrissy walks off, and the Kings have a 7-3 lead. All 
Our score here, Larry Jones giving Miami a 7-3 lead on a touchdown run. Interesting. They were spreading the field early. They had minus 10 yards rushing. They weren't having any success offensively. So Miami, in that last drive, the drive that was successful with a touchdown, went two tight ends, power attack the entire drive. Yeah, that minus 11 yards rushing, Tim, is kind of misleading because factored into that statistic are the sacks, and there was a big one. They've had a couple, Virginia Tech has. Pruitt kicking off. Brian still is in his own end zone, but this one will go out of bounds. So they'll bring it up to the 35 where Virginia Tech will start with pretty good field position. Let's talk about that Hokie offense. They really haven't been able to muster much offense today. No, they really haven't. Neither side really has gotten going offensively until that last drive by Miami, which just was an elephant-type formation, two tight ends. Put the big guys up front and follow them home. The Virginia Tech offense with just 42 yards on the afternoon. Maurice DeShazo, though, is a strong leader. Well, he is, but also Virginia Tech has scored just two touchdowns and two road games in the Big East this year. One offensive and one defensive, so they have not really gotten a whole lot of offense. Little play action on the waggle. DeShazo throws low and incomplete to his tight end, Kevin Martin. Not a good-looking pass. No, and DeShazo is one of those kids, we understand from the coaches, where he's hard on himself. So if he misses a pass now, then he'll go back and let it bother him for two or three more plays. You can see him there walking back to the huddle, shaking his head. That also has that man, Frank Beamer, a little bit concerned. He needs to have some success. He needs to have it now to get that ego, get that confidence high. Last week, he was 16 of 29, 183 yards, no interceptions, and a pair of touchdowns. But Miami's defense is a little bit better than Pitt's, which, of course, is an understatement. This is Dwayne Thomas out to the 39-yard line. It's going to set up third down. And about six to go, the tackle made by Pat Riley. Tonight on ABC, the Olsen twins, Cloris Leachman and Meshack Taylor, star in a special Halloween family movie, Double Double Toil and Trouble. Then Michael Chiklis stars in an all-new commish, all tonight, here on ABC. It's third down and five to go. A huge, vociferous crowd on hand here at the Orange Bowl. DeShazo into traffic, complete for the first down. Kevin Martin, he came right back to his target on the prior play and found him this time. That should be enough for the first down, but they may have to measure. That is right on the, the markers. Yeah, they gave him the first on the mark. Watch the tight end, inside, 88 releasing. He's already calling for the ball. Come on, give it up, boom. Now he knows he has to get across the 50 and falls backwards, got the mark, first down, Virginia Tech, moved the chains. Nice play by Kevin Martin, letting them know, hey, I'm here, I'm here, let me have it. Interestingly enough, you saw Brian still in the neighborhood too. He was in the same vicinity. Only the second first down for Frank Beamer's team this afternoon. Holmes in motion. The draw to Thomas, no way. Ray Lewis said, not now. Lewis, the top tackler in the Big East last year among freshmen. That now a final Texas Tech just spanked the Longhorns. Surprise, surprise. Texas struggling a little bit. Lost to Rice not too long ago. You know, it's amazing right here. I'm surprised they aren't looking for Antonio Freeman more. He's only got one catch. Let's see what they do here on second and long. The screen pass to Thomas, and Ray Lewis said, I told you, not here. <laughs> they read that one well. He was the fresh, first freshman to start under Erickson at Miami. First true freshman, that's absolutely right. You know, he's just a sophomore, had 76 tackles as a freshman. He has 85 already this year. Watch 52, he's locked on him already. That's his key. As Soon as he moves, you gotta follow. He does, no false steps, got right to him, made the tackle. Nicely done. Sophomore out of Lakeland, Florida. Third and 16. He had 22 tackles against Washington. They put it on the ground and fumble it. DeShazo pounces on the ball, the 22. 
but they'll have to punt. Tech with absolutely no offense. Maurice DeShazo has to be thinking about that old Marvin Gaye song, What's Going On? A loss of 17 yards on that play. DeShazo struggling. This is not necessarily his fault, or is it? Yes, he took his eye off the ball. It was snapped before he expected it. I don't know if that's his fault or the center's, but he wasn't looking for the ball, that's for sure. Holly punting from his own 12. Gets off a great punt. A high spiral that sends German back to the 20. And German nicely moves it up to the 34-yard line, but a 60-yard boot and 16 on the return. We'll be right back. German's return, but I want you to watch Willie Phillips with this block. Stop it right there. Here he is. Boom. It looks like Williams is going to make the tackle, but watch him get cleared out here. Bam! What a block. I'm that's telling what, you, that's a slobber knocker. That's what happens when you free Willie. Phillips with a nice hit. Just under five and a half minutes to play in the first half. The Canes with a 7-3 lead over the Hokies. Miami scoring on their last possession. Single back set once again and three wideouts. Play action to Jones. Costa for the big home run. German incomplete. Might have been face guarding, but no flag. You know, I'm, I feel the same way, Mark. I think there should have been a flag on Henley. Stacy Henley's a senior. He played offense until just last week. He got locked on, never did look back, had his hands up. Same thing Torian Gray did early. Watch this, play action, boom, puts it up. Now this ball was a dead duck. It was thrown too high and it was wobbling. Well, I tell you, he got tagged. But watch this, look at 31, Henley never looking back, has his hands up face guarding, should have been a flag, there wasn't one. Well, the official was right there, so he obviously thought otherwise. Second down and 10. Costa puts it up again, complete. First down at the 50-yard line. Yatil Green now, a 16-yard pickup by Green. Now here's a guy, Tim, the coaches feel is very, very special. He is going to be a great receiver before his career is finished at Miami. He's another one of those freshmen. He's a redshirt freshman. Again, 6'3", using that height advantage. He's working against 24 Yarbrough, who's 5'11". They put it up high. Anytime you place it high, let a 6'3", 6'4", guy go against a 5'10", guy. That's the way to go. It's the old alley-oop, basketball or football, and every time he'll make the catch. And how many times this year have we seen Green go high in the air to haul in a pass? He has a penchant for doing that. 4.50 to play in the first half. Jones slips and falls at the 47-yard line. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action, including that big showdown earlier between Nebraska and Colorado. He'll have a conversation with Alabama's head coach, Gene Stallings, a guy who we had a chance to visit with last week when they defeated Mississippi. So one more team has its first loss, drops from the ranks of the unbeaten. This stadium was a buzz earlier. People talking about, well, it looks like it'll be Nebraska and Miami here in the Orange Bowl. Two teams that are not strangers to this place. Jones in motion. Trent Jones. Backside pressure, screen pass. And it's dropped by Alfred Shipman. Got a little bit anxious and took his eye off the ball. J.C. Price providing pressure. Brandon Simonis was hoping that ball was thrown backwards because he got a good bounce. Again, they're outside. Nobody picks him up. It's Coleman, number six, who puts the pressure on Costa. Costa has to throw off balance. So it'll be third down and 12 to go. Shipman checking out of the ball game. Jones split to the wide side of the field. Out of the shotgun. They put it on the ground. How many times have we seen poor snaps today? I think that's three. Costa recovers his own fumble. You mean out of the shotgun? Well, I'm not so sure that was a poor snap, the one that... Uh, well, there's some sort DeShazo. of miscommunication. DeShazo was looking. Yeah, there was miscommunication. DeShazo was looking around, and this time it looked like Costa was not looking at the center. 
So in to punt comes Dane Pruitt, who stands on his own 21-yard line. Pruitt punting because Mike Chrissy has an injured groin. It's off a decent punt. Freeman at the 18. Antonio Freeman brought down at the 25, a 35-yard punt, and six yards on the return. Next Saturday, number five Miami at number 14 Syracuse, under the big top at the Carrier Dome, plus a Big Ten game and a Pac-10 game. Don't forget to call your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view. Starts at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC. Tim, we saw Syracuse a few weeks ago defeat this Virginia Tech team. And their quarterback, Kevin Mason, is another guy who keeps improving week to week. They've won six games in a row. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Syracuse had to score two touchdowns in the last two minutes and 30 seconds to beat Virginia Tech. Defense played pretty well that game until the last three minutes, but didn't wrap its arms, missed some tackles. Bingo, Syracuse wins. Shazo on the play action. Overthrows his intended receiver, number 86, Kevin Martin. DeShazo doesn't seem like he's in rhythm right now. He's certainly not comfortable, although this time he thinks Martin was the, the culprit. He thought he put it there where Martin could make that catch. Take another look. Here he is. Boom. It's the slow block, then the release right into the flats. He's already got the linebacker beaten. All he has to do is get the pass. Oh, DeShazo, that's on him. That's his bad. That ball, that's a tough, tough catch for anybody. He's thrown too far. DeShazo needing one touchdown pass to set a school record. As we approach three minutes to play in the first half, way up in the air, Antonio Freeman incomplete. Kenny Holmes was providing pressure and tipped that ball to force it to go high. I don't know if he got the ball or DeShazo's arm, but Holmes was there and caused the, he caused havoc is what he did. Kenny Holmes is a name that we're calling a lot this afternoon, Tim. Uh, you'd expect Warren Sapp's name to be called a lot, but he has been a little bit conspicuous by his absence, probably because of a double or triple team. Yeah, well, that's right. Sapp is the guy. He's he's the real deal. He'll be playing on Sundays in the National Football League, one of the first-round draft picks. This is movement on the right side of the line by number 77, watching Virginia Tech. Dead ball foul, ball start. On the offense, it remains third down. And it'll be third and 15 now instead of third and 10. You know, every time Virginia Tech has had a problem, it's been inconsistency. Penalties, turnovers. There's the top of your screen. There it is right there. Top guy. He moves. Bingo. Right there. Throw the flag. Stop it. Looks like Holmes is making sure the official sees it, too. Give it out on Biachin. Give a little bit of help. 3.08 to play in the first half. Third and 15. And the Hokies trail 7-3. The only touchdown of the game coming virtue of a two-yard touchdown run by Larry Jones. Well, in the first quarter, it was Miami minus 10 yards rushing. This quarter, total yards, Virginia Tech minus 18. 29 for the game. So Miami now defensively and offensively playing much better. I'm trying to reset the clock. Problems with the scoreboard here at the Orange Bowl. That's the holdup. Those numbers are amazing. Minus 18 yards total offense this quarter. Tim, we had a nice visit with that man yesterday, Dennis Erickson. Really relaxed, talking I'm, about his golf game. You know, everyone's happy. They came back after that Washington loss and showed a lot of resilience and rolling off three straight wins after losing that game. I've never seen him as relaxed he is right now. He says, I've taken all the hits. I've taken everything. There's nothing else they can do to me here. So I'm just saying, heck with it. I'm coaching, playing golf, and enjoying life. You know, he said these guys right here could be his best team ever. He said he's got more talent now than he's ever had. Yeah, that's saying something. Oh, when you think of the number of Miami players that have gone on to the NFL, have been all-conference, all-American. Hey, Miami has the best record in the nation since 1983. That's when the Canes went on that tear with the first of their four national titles. And he says this could be the best group ever. Whoa. Incredible. I'm a little disappointed personally, though, that they don't have that little dance routine on their Friday field. afternoon practices. Well, they stopped that. 13. They said it was a two-minute deal Texas when Jimmy Johnson was here. <laughs> it, it became a whole practice deal. Looked like Soul Train at one point. Yeah, so they said, we got to get back to football and stop dancing so much. Hey, when you win games, nothing else matters sometimes. Still working on the clock. That's the holdup here, trying to get things squared away. 
George Perlis getting a bit of a reprieve this week. His team winning. Third quarter four. Bowling Green also winning. Teams in the yellow bold print, the winners of course. But what a strange year for the Irish. A disappointing year. That's a game, Notre Dame Navy, that has been the subject of a lot of controversy this past week. People saying, why does Navy, a team with only one win all year, and that being against Lafayette, and that was just 7-0, why would they want to play the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame? Well, head coach George Chomp, who's taken some hits down in Annapolis, says the reason for that is it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, intersectional rivalry in major college football. It's a great tradition. Let's go. We have to keep it. Tim, we talked about the uh, Miami players not too long ago and talked about the fact that they changed the dance routine they don't have that on Fridays anymore which was a tradition here for a long time but you know these players get involved in the community and after that Cotton Bowl debacle where they're penalized all those yards they underwent a few changes and the image of the team has been cleaned up Dennis Erickson has had his players go into the community do some great things with the kids and he is to be commended for that we'll be right back Folks, who do you think this is? Do, 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 do. Answer is Dennis Erickson, quarterback at Montana State. Passing on some of that knowledge to Frank Costa. Known as a good quarterback coach as well, as a head coach. Third and 15 for DeShazo. It's fumbled. Miami has it. Kenny Holmes ripped it away, and Short recovered it. Baraka Short made the fumble recovery. Rock will probably get the headlines, but watch Holmes number 90, top of your screen, just blows by by Achin, 77, reaches out and strips the ball from DeShazo. And he says, oh, go ahead. Baraka Short, you take it. You get the headlines. But well, watch this. Watch him reach back. Number 90. Whoosh. Oh, that's a nice play. You know, DeShazo has to be able to feel that. He's got to step up further in the pocket to protect himself. He's got that big wingspan, about six feet. That'll help. Hand to hand. Ferguson, the lone back. 3.04 to play in the first half. Another fumble. And Tim, I can't figure this out. That center to quarterback exchange today has been an adventure. And the new quarterback is Ryan Collins. Maybe that's why it happened in this particular case. I was just going to tell you with a new quarterback that oftentimes happens. Ryan Collins comes in. He hadn't taken the snaps from Jones. That happens more times than not. I can tell you that. Now we should let you know that Costa is not injured. Collins does come in at about this time in most games. Two quarterbacks like to split time. One started the first five games last year, the other the second seven. And second down, 13. Ferguson reversing his field. Ferguson tapped it at the 16-yard line. A little scat back. Six feet, 195 pounds, a sophomore. Tackled by William Yarbrough. No gain on the play. Another look at that play, Ferguson. Didn't have anything doing right there, Tim, and came back the other way. These Miami backs, so quick, so agile. Good vision. All the traits that you want in a good tailback. Third down at 13 now. Four wideouts for the Canes. Collins out of the shotgun this time. And Blitz and Collins. Still looking. German incomplete. No flag. He may have been hit by Ken Brown, number 44. When they put Collins in the ball game, they say one of the biggest reasons he gives him a different look is his mobility. He can move a lot better than Costa. Now watch this. They come from the outside blitz. Here's Collins. Boom, boom. Feels it. Steps up. Now watch. Hey, there's no way they can catch me. 41's Del Rico. He gets knocked off by 73 Perry. 
And that ball could have been caught. Watch. The umpire gets in the way, gives him a little shield, and he loses the ball because the umpire's there, who, it, by the way, is part of the field. In comes Dane Pruitt, who is 7 of 8 on the year in field goals, and this one splits the uprights right down Main Street. From 33 yards out, he connects. And Miami now takes a 10 to 3 lead over Virginia Tech. Looks like Daphne's number 82 is being reprimanded by the official. Hey, I don't want to see any more of that stuff. That's Dane, what he's telling them. Dane Pruitt, Tim, seeing double duty punting and place kicking today. You know, he hit this one from an angle. Not an easy kick. Well, I mean, he split the sticks with plenty of power. 33 yards. For the last, well, eight years, Miami has had an impressive string of place kickers. Think about Carlos Huerta, who was very accurate in his career here. And Pruitt, who is a junior, has one more year left. Also an accurate kicker. Eight of nine on the season now. Mark, Virginia Tech's getting a nice ball game from its defense. It is getting absolutely no offense. What has to happen for the Hokies now is for the special teams, which have made plays all year, to come up big. And Brian Still, Tim, is standing on his old goal line. Pruitt is going to kick off. Haven't heard a lot from Antonio Freeman today. He's only made one reception. It's a good point. Virginia Tech averages almost 400 total yards a game. Today they have 22. That's it. 116 to play in the first half. Miami with a 10 to 3 lead. It's been pretty much a defensive struggle, and we figured it would be just that with two of the best teams defensively in the country. This is Brian Still, two yards deep. Still a light guy, just 167 pounds, but with 4-4 speed is brought down by Tuan Russell at the 20-yard uh, line. So now it's time for Maurice DeShazo to get something going offensively. 111 remaining in the first half. And DeShazo coming back in at a fumble on their last possession to set up that field goal. He's no stranger to controversy. He's gone through tough times at Virginia Tech in his career. Just threw it on the ground, intended for Dwayne Thomas. And they're going to penalize him. That's intentional grounding. You know, do you remember a little while ago we said, hey, he's got to get rid of the ball. He can't take sacks. Well, I'm sure when he got to the sideline, that's what they told him. But this time, instead of throwing out of bounds, he just threw it down like intentional grounding, well, and they threw a flag. Well, Dwayne Thomas was just a few yards away. Intentional grounding, Virginia Tech, five-yard penalty, loss of down. It'll be second down. Did you hear DeShazo? You, you could hear him say he was right there. DeShazo saying the th same thing you did. And I'll tell you something, Frank Beer's upset too. Frank Beamer, rather. Watch this. Now watch 42. 42 is your receiver. Bam, there's the ball. He's right there. I'll tell you what, folks. You've got a receiver in the area. He just threw it at his feet. I wouldn't throw a flag on that. DeShazo still can't believe it. Maurice DeShazo is going to have to endure, and so will Frank Beamer. You know, Frank's not a guy that shows a lot of emotion during a ball game normally, but he is some kind of hot here. That ball almost hit his receiver. I'm sure he's going to pursue one of the officials well, going into the locker room at halftime. This might get, if they can get out of here, might get Virginia Tech stoked, but they're in a precarious situation here. They hand it off to the fullback, Brian Edmonds, who wrestles his way out to the five-yard line. Miami calling for a timeout. A tackle made by Kennard Lang and Corwin Francis that time. All right, Miami now with two timeouts remaining. Just a minute on the clock. They want to stop him to get good field position and try to get some more points on the board before the half. Stick around. We'll be right back. Tim, it's 88 degrees here in Miami, but it got a little bit hotter when Frank Beamer started talking to those officials on the sideline. Well, I'll tell you something. He is hot, and the reason he's hot is because 
He says he had a receiver in the area. This should not have been intentional grounding. All right, now stop it right here. Here's your receiver. Here's your quarterback. All he's got to do is throw it there and just get it within five yards. Watch this. Boom, throws it at his feet. And they said that was intentional grounding. Frank Beamer said it wasn't. It is third down. And Naples, Florida to go. 26. The draw to Thomas. A gang tackle. He, <laughs> they, they want the safety, but they're not going to get it. Francis leading the charge of tacklers, along with Ray Lewis. And now Virginia Tech will have to punt in the shadows of their own goalposts. Miami's going to get the ball back as the clock stops with 53 seconds to go. I'm going to tell you, that, that penalty now is huge because you're right, Miami is going to have good field position with 53 seconds left. Jamie German standing back at midfield, and Robbie Colley is right near the back line of the end zone. Fifty-three seconds to play in the first half. Virginia Tech trailing ten to three. Their offense unable to move the ball so far in the first two periods. For its career longs, forty-eight yards, it needs to get it to the thirty-one yard line. Time to get with the program, Colley. Robbie Colley gets off a great punt back to the forty-three. German makes it back to the forty-three yard line of the Hokies, and a flag thrown. Number 31 of Miami will be penalized with a hit. I think he's talking to uh, number 30 of the Hokies. And number 30's Vernon Dozier. 30 and 31, we'll watch, we'll see what happens. Stacy Henley. Maybe offsetting. We have dead ball, personal foul against the both kicking and receiving team. They offset. It'll be first down. Miami will get the ball at the 43 then. 42 seconds to play in the first half. Look for the block in the back, top right hand of your screen. Germans return. Pretty good one. Frank Costa back in at quarterback with three wide receivers. On the out pattern, incomplete. He threw it low, intended for Jonathan Harris. And not a good looking pass by Frank Costa. Stops the clock with 34 seconds left. Miami still has that one timeout, which they would call to get the kicker on the field. Again, I'll tell you that his longest of Pruitt's career, as long as field goal is 48 yards, they want to get the ball down to the 31 yard line to give him a shot at this. Right now, they're on the 40, 43. There's a slight crosswind blowing through the orange ball, so Pruitt would not benefit from any kind of wind. Cost to the pass. Complete at the 30 yard line. A nice catch by Yatil Green, the freshman, who picks up 13 yards, and they stop the clock to move the sticks. That pass right there puts him in Pruitt's range. They still have 29 seconds left. You see how they manage the clock. Green now lining up wide to the bottom of your screen. Costa steps up. Now to the 25-yard line. Smart play by Costa. Call timeout. You got 15 seconds left. You're being chased out. Don't do anything stupid. Don't throw it where it can be picked off. So he scrambled forward. He got it down to the 26-yard line. Frank Costa has been through a lot here at Miami. Last year, lost the starting job. This year has been the starter the entire time. Now, last year after the Fiesta Bowl debacle, he met with Erickson and was wondering, actually, if he had a future at Miami. And Erickson promised him a fresh start in the spring. The rest is history. He's held down the starting job the entire year. He was so disappointed, Costa was, at one point last year. He just jumped in his car 
in the middle of the night and uh, just drive, get in his car and drive. And one night, he actually got as far as Orlando before he stopped and said, hey, this is stupid. I've got to get a grip on myself. You know, talking about the quarterbacks, you were talking about the, all the Joneses earlier, seven Joneses on this Miami team. How about the quarterbacks? You got four C's at quarterback. Costa, Costa, Collins, Covington, Clement. <laughs> kind of goes in cycles. Yeah, so you could have a nice spelling bee contest here at Miami. Frank Beamer still upset by that intentional grounding call that gave Miami this uh, this field position. Ball on the 26-yard line with 15 seconds to play in the half. Time for a few more plays. Costa, the pass. Into the end zone for T. Jones. Incomplete. Cobra uncoiled, but couldn't haul in the pass. Well, William Yarbrough with the coverage. Well played by Yarbrough, too. He knew he had help from the sidelines and the out-of-bounds line in the back of the end zone. He used that like an extra defensive back. Watch him now. Here comes 24. He knows the end line's back there. Go up, just push him out, play the ball all the way. Nice play. Nine seconds to play now in the first half. Let's look at Jones. Chris T. Jones, as opposed to the tight end who's a freshman, the other Chris Jones. They've got to be careful here, Mark. They don't have any timeouts left. Got to watch the clock. Three wideouts to the bottom of your screen. Costa into the end zone again. Green. Touchdown to Hayes. Frank Costa just laid it up there. And Yatil Green, as I said earlier, just has a penchant for going up high and making those types of catches, Tim. Boy, I tell you, this ball is perfectly thrown, too. They come back to the exact same play. They go against Yarbrough again. The reason, Yarbrough's only 5'11". And Green is six foot three. Watch this, put it high. He just out jumps Yarbrough. That's a great catch. Keeps his feet in bounds. Touchdown. I mean, a marvelous catch. Took it right away from Yarbrough and out jumped him. Use that height advantage. The coach has told us he has special talent. And right there, you saw a demonstration of it. Yatil Green giving Miami a 17-3. Back here in sunny, hot Miami, Florida, I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins on a beautiful Southern Florida afternoon. The Miami Hurricanes lead the Virginia Tech Hokies by a score of 17-3 as we await the beginning of the third quarter. A little bit of controversy at the end of that first half. And Dean Blevins talked about Frank Beamer about that controversial grounding call. Here's what they had to say. Coach, that call apparently cost you seven. Well, we still had a chance to come back, but it's just an awful call. We got a guy right there, and we throw it. We're, we're, we're down in it, sure. It's done in football ever all the time. We had a receiver a yard from him, two yards from him. 42, Dwayne Thomas. I just thought it was an awful call. Now you got the crowd fired up, and... You know, we, did, we had a chance to come back and stop him. They throw a great pass at the end, and the uh, guy goes up and makes a great catch. Tell me what adjustments you make, because other than that, you play great defensively, yet they're a tremendous defensive team. How do you score? Yeah, I think offensively, we got to get the ball on down the field. You know, in other words, we haven't really challenged them downfield, and we got to. That's just, uh, I guess, the bottom line. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. Take a look at that controversial play, because referee Terry Monk felt he threw it intentionally to avoid the sack. Watch this, but the rule clearly states, now stop it right here. Well, go ahead, Roland, and let him throw it. Number 42 right here is the guy. All right, and the rule clearly states him intentionally thrown into an area not occupied by an eligible player to save a loss of yardage, then it's intentionally grounded. But obviously, you can see 42 Thomas was in the area, so by rule, there should have been no flag. He had a, he had a gripe. And that is the definitive word out of the rule book. Virginia Tech will kick off. Miami will receive. That is Atlee Larson. And back deep is Al Shipman and Jamie German, number seven and 32, respectively, for Miami. Pivotal game for both teams in the Big East Conference. Miami is a perfect 2-0 in Big East play, while Virginia Tech is 4-1. Their only loss coming at the hands of Syracuse in Syracuse a few weeks ago, Miami, interestingly enough, travels up to the Carrier Dome next weekend in a game you'll see right here on ABC. The 
second half, the Hokies need to make some offensive adjustments. But their defense will go on the field first. Here's Shipman at the three. Al Shipman met at the 19-yard line. Dean Blevins, what's up down there? Guys out of the locker room, Coach Erickson had, uh, we were told what he told his club. And what he did tell his club was that defensively, they're going to move their tackles around, Riley and Sapp. Sapp was double teamed a lot, try to get them more active. Offensively, they're going for the jugular. As long as the Hokies stack the line, they're going to go deep and let's see if they can get some jump balls. They like what they're doing. Well, that's how they got their last touchdown, Dean. Thanks. That's Till Green going up high in the end zone and bringing it down. That's normally what they do. They score a long plays of... Ten touchdown passes to Costa through coming into the game. Only three with 49, less than 49 yards. Danielle Ferguson, the lone back. He gets the carry. Bouncing it outside. Oh, he's got some room, folks. Danielle Ferguson run out of bounds in Virginia Tech territory at the 44-yard line. And he picks up 35 yards on that play. This is a problem Virginia Tech had in its only loss against Syracuse. Making good hits, but not wrapping arms. Now watch the contact that Simonis has here. Coming up, boom, right here. Doesn't wrap the arms. Consequently, Ferguson's out of there, and he picks up another 30 yards. Daniel Ferguson with tremendous speed. And when you play at Miami, say you run a 4-4, people say, yeah, so what? <laughs> Pretty much par for the course down here. Larry Jones now with the tailback. Jones to the short side of the field. Nice gainer. Punishing the tackler at the 34-yard line. Stacy Henley took a hit. Here's a look at how we arrived at this 17-3 score. Ryan Williams opened up the scoring for the Hokies, making it 3-0. Then Larry Jones with a four-yard touchdown run to make it 7-3. And then Dane Pruitt with a 33-yard field goal to make it 10-3 for the Canes. And then Yatil Green benefiting from that grounding call that we mentioned just moments ago. They get 17-3. All the Miami points coming in the second quarter. That ends a streak of 20 consecutive quarters here at the Orange Bowl that the Hurricanes have scored in. They were shut out in the first quarter. It's been a year of streak breaking for them. They lost to Washington. Ferguson down to the 34-yard line. Tackled by Hank Coleman. Just mentioned that loss against Washington. Coach Erickson very happy about the way they bounce back. But, Tim, some of the keys and how they've developed so far. Well, we said they had to be successful in first down, and they have 17 first downs. They only average 2.7, so Virginia Tech doing a fine job doing uh, stopping them there. But the ability to run the ball, Miami, look at this. Defensively, Virginia Tech is getting the job done. But they've given up a couple of big plays, and obviously they got killed there at the end of the half with a bad call. Costa, a quick three-step drop over the middle complete. His tight end, Nafins, falls down. Tripped over the 30-yard line, in fact. 6'3", 246 sophomore. 246 pounds sophomore. You know, he came into this game with only four receptions, but he had an average of 17 yards per catch. Not bad at all. Another homegrown product. Give this offensive line a lot of credit, including the tight end. The Miami offensive line has been a finesse group a lot of times in the past, but not with this group. This is a power-driven, exceptional offensive line, at least two deep, with great skill people. Third down and two. The give is to Ferguson. He's going to be close. Not sure that he made it. He had to get down to the 24-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Cornell Brown, number 58, came off that corner like a shot, made the first contact way short of the first down, but then he did not hold on, and they got up awfully close. They'll measure. I haven't called Cornell Brown's name too much today. No, he's uh, one of the better defensive players. Came into the game with 10 sacks, which is tops on the Virginia Tech defensive unit. Also forced three fumbles. You see they got enough for the first. Cornell Brown, also the younger brother of Pitts, outstanding offensive tackle, Reuben Brown. A pivotal Big East game for both teams. Syracuse at 4-0. They're idle this week.
Miami at 2 and 0, Virginia Tech at 4 and 1. Of course, Miami plays Syracuse next week, so a win here and a win there pretty much wraps things up for the Hurricanes. Virginia Tech had to win this game in hope next week. Out of a two tight end set, Ferguson again. This time wrapped up, and there's a flag down at the 20 yard line. Antonio Banks making the tackle. Banks has had a strong afternoon for the Hokies. He really has, but this could be a face mask. And a Miami player is down at the 24-yard line. It's a Virginia Tech player. Check that. It's going to be holding against Miami. The player shaken up on the field for Virginia Tech is Jeff Holland, number 74, a backup defensive lineman. Richard Jr. out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Miami driving down to the 24-yard line. And Frank Beamer's defense, Tim, might start to get a little bit fatigued and tired. Fitness and fitness level will be an important part of the second half here because they're starting to spend a lot of time on the field. That's a great point because when they kicked this game off, it was 88 degrees. On the offense. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Very hot afternoon. Very little breeze down in the stadium. Welcome to Miami. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brent and Dean Blevins. We have 12.30 remaining in the third quarter, and the Miami Hurricanes lead the Virginia Tech Hokies by a score of 17-3. The story of the game so far has been the big play offense of Miami. Defensively, the Hokies' defense has been able to get the job done for the most part, but offensively, Maurice DeShazo is having a miserable afternoon. He is just 6 of 13 for a total of 35 yards. On the other side of the line, there's been a balanced attack for Miami, both passing and running the ball. Larry Jones is starting in place of the injured James Stewart, and Jones is doing a fine job. Ryan Williams opened the scoring to make it three to nothing for Virginia Tech on a 38-yard field goal, but Larry Jones countered with a four-yard touchdown run to make it seven to three. Then the Canes got another score from Dane Pruitt, connecting on a 33-yard field goal. He's doing both duties today, punting and place kicking. And Util Green caught a 25-yard touchdown pass from Costa to make it 17-3 to just as the first half ended. But the key thing to mention there was that there was a controversial grounding play called against the Hokies. And that set up Miami for that touchdown near the end of the first half. Great Miami, great field position at the end of the half to, to throw that touchdown pass and to follow up on the point we were talking about just moments ago. Not only is it a hot afternoon, but Virginia Tech's offense has been unable to really get any sustained drives, so they consequently have not been able to rest their defense, been on the field so much this afternoon that the fatigue is definitely a factor. As you look at Jeff Holland, 74, they're going to put him on a board, and they brought out a gurney. and See if we can pick it up. Watch number 74. They come down on his back. Watch this, how he gets kind of rolled up on. He's already grabbing for his back. Never a good sight when they bring out the gurney, and hopefully it's just for precautionary reasons. We're going to kick it back to John Saunders in New York. John? Mark, Navy against Notre Dame earlier today. We told you Navy took a 7-0 lead, and man, the Fighting Irish just went off. Emmett Mosley, 24 yards here. His third touchdown of the day made it 45-7. He had four. 58-21 is the final. And Texas A&M trying to come back against SMU. Corey Pullick, 25 yards to Rodney Thomas. They missed the extra point, still down by one. Mark. All right, John, Texas A&M, Tim, one of those teams that is still undefeated, although Colorado no longer among the undefeated ranks. No, you know, and it's starting to look, too, like uh, without a playoff situation, which we don't have in college football right now, and it's been discussed both sides and both ways vehemently, but 
without a college uh, playoff situation. You've got these undefeated teams. There is that possibility again. We're going to have a couple of undefeated teams, and that mythical national championship will have to be split. I thought it was interesting at halftime to hear Gene Stallings, whose Alabama team is undefeated, say that he is against a playoff system. Right, and there is the possibility he could end up undefeated and still not win that national title or at least have a, a chance to play for it outright. And speaking of national titles, Dennis Erickson has two of them here at Miami. But these fans are sometimes very tough to please. Nothing short of perfection will do in Miami sometimes. We'll be right back. <laughs> Jeff Holland being wheeled off the field, but an encouraging sign just moments ago. We did see him move his feet and his head, Tim. Watch number 74, left side of your screen, right up here. We'll try to see what happens to Jeff Holland. He started grabbing his back when he got rolled up on. Right down, he's down already. And he's grabbing his back right there. But as you mentioned, he was moving his limbs, he was moving his feet, moving his head. Let's go down, here's Dean. Good news, Jeff Holland, he will be taken inside for x-rays. But the trainers tell me it is a lower back injury, not a neck at all, and they expect it to not be a serious injury. Good news indeed, Dean. Meanwhile, Mom, Mom my and Dad, Chesapeake, Virginia will be happy to hear that. Screen pass, flanker screen, and German gets drilled at the 30-yard line. J.C. Price was right. Tried to set up the flanker screen, but Price was right there for it. J.C. just creamed. That's what J.C. stands for. Just creamed the ball carrier. German. And said to him, how's that feel, Jamie? It is second down and 16 after a gain of one. Virginia Tech defense has given up 17 points, but this may sound crazy. They play well. They really have. In spite of the 17 points. Second and 16, Costa out of the shotgun. Throws a bounce pass, complete, but bounce passes don't count. Intended for Jonathan Harris. Talking about the defense for Virginia Tech and how well they've played, giving up 17 points. You know, to play well defensively, the offense has to help you. And that hasn't been the case this afternoon. Virginia Tech's offense is on the field and off in a matter of minutes. They haven't been able to do anything offensively. As a matter of fact, they had 23 total yards at the half. And so the defense has been on the field all afternoon in 85 degree temperatures. Boy, that's a tough way to play. Yep. The Hokie offense has yet to get a crack at the ball here. Four wideouts for the Canes. Trent Jones checking with his quarterback Costa. Out of the shotgun. Delay of game. That's exactly what it's going to be. And Costa's disgusted. You know, and the crowd could feel it too. They started screaming and snapped the ball. Dead ball. Delay of game. On the offense. Remains third down. As you heard, it's now third down, but they've got 21 yards to go now. Frank Costa with a touchdown pass today. Defensively, Virginia Tech has to come up with a big play to turn this ball game around. It's starting to get out of reach for him. There it is on third and long, 21 yards to go. Pressure on Costa, he's sacked at the 46-yard line. The third one of the afternoon, and Price is there again. J.C. Price has played well all day. He came into the game with two sacks, gets another one here. Very mobile guy, was a tight end in high school. Look at him come shooting through there and make that play. We just talked about the defense coming up and making a big play to help turn the tide here, to turn this ball game around. They got one, now it's gonna be up to the offense. And here is Dane Pruitt to punt. Gets off a knuckleball, but it will be down inside the 20. The 14 to be exact. A dribbler, a roller, just 29, 29 yards. We'll be right back. CFA College Football and ABC Sports brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Also proud sponsor of the season opening Mercedes Championships on ABC. Zima, a unique alcohol beverage. 
The sun just starting to set here in southern Florida in Miami. 10.42 to play in the third quarter. Virginia Tech trailing by two touchdowns. They need to get some offense here. The Shazo rolling out. Fires incomplete. That is typical of the first half that he had, Tim. This is terrible. They had 23 total yards. They have just two first downs. Virginia Tech, six of the last eight possessions lasted less than two minutes. Penn State drilling Ohio State 42 to 6. Making a statement, aren't they? Right. Nittany Lions. It'll be interesting to see how that vote comes out on Monday morning, on Saint, Sunday. St. Joe Paterno has himself a pretty fine ball club. Second 10, Maurice DeShazo has gone the distance at quarterback. Fires complete to Freeman. Freeman on his feet and down at the 41 yard line. Finally, they get the ball to their big play guy. You have to wonder where he's been. That's only his second catch today. He got one at the very beginning of the ball game. They haven't looked his way again. I'll tell you this, he is extremely dangerous. He averages 20 yards every time he makes a catch. He has 27 catches on a year. He can separate from defenders like he did here, and he can readjust on the ball to make a catch. You've got to get him involved in the offense and go to him more. He has got to get busy. Shazo in the flat to Dwayne Thomas, roughed up out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Looks like he lost a yard. They're going to mark it at the 39. Frank Beamer talked about threatening the defense of Miami at the end of the first half. Said that they had to move the ball downfield and go up top. They are not eating up any of the clock. They're not letting their defense rest. And right now, DeShazo is just 8 for 16, 61 yards, and does not look confident. Seen a lot of intermediate routes being run, Tim, but nothing downtown. Not the long ball. Holmes in motion. Shazo complete to Holmes at the 44-yard line. So he gets a gain of about six. And it'll be third down, about five and a half to go for Virginia Tech. Chad Wilson on the coverage and the tackle. Holmes, your leading receiver. Watch this. Now this time DeShazo does hang in there with a lot of pressure. Guys flying around him, and he makes the pass. Now, as you mentioned, an intermediate route. It's not nearly enough for the first down, so it'll bring up third and long, third and six perhaps. But at the same time, at least DeShazo now has a couple of completions. That was Holmes' first catch, but it looks like DeShazo is starting to settle in a little bit. And here comes the Hurricane fans with the noise. DeShazo had it tipped. Incomplete at the 40-yard line. Hey, look who it is, too. Big old number 76, Warren Sapp. Big-time player. Came into the game with 15 hurries, five sacks. Well, I'll tell you this. Watch 76. They do a little game. They fight to the outside. Fights his way through, gets his hand up, and tips the ball. Nicely done by Warren Sapp, an Outland and Lombardi Trophy candidate. He'll be playing in the NFL. Holly punting from the 36, gets off a great punt. Wow, fielded by German in the end zone. Look out. Jamie German, the J-Train, runs it out to the 35-yard line, where he's tackled by Tommy Edwards. A 55-yard punt, but 37 on the return. You know, they say never field a punt inside the 10. I think he loses sight of where he is. All of a sudden, watch this. Everybody overruns him, and he's got some clear sailing. Picks up a couple of blocks. Boy, is he dangerous. German, nicely done to come out of there. I question why he would even think about making that catch. You see that great punt return. You know who his idol is, right? Deion Sanders from Prime the same time. hometown, Fort Myers. Ferguson, the tailback. Three wide outs to the bottom of your screen. This is Ferguson. Up the middle, down to the 44-yard line. Tough sledding, tackled by Action Jackson. Back to John Saunders in New York. Mark, Penn State fans are downright giddy in Happy Valley. Kajana Carter, 13 yards out, his fourth touchdown of the day. And right now, it is more than a blowout. 49 to six, the Nittany Lions looking to stay at number one. That is a good old-fashioned project meeting right there. Boy, is it ever. I've been in Happy Valley and taken 
that beating from Penn State before. A handoff to Ferguson again. Ferguson trying to bounce it outside, square those shoulders, get to the corner. Can't do it and is brought down at the 46-yard line. He's about a yard short of the first down, and there's a look at Rohan Marley. Injured his knee earlier in the game with those familiar dreadlocks. Leading tackler a year ago, having an outstanding season this year. Didn't look like he got hit hard, just kind of twisted that knee, had ice on it. We knew then he wasn't coming back. You know, people don't understand when that young man travels back to Jamaica, where he's from, he is a national idol and a hero. Oh, yeah, he's large. <laughs> he's large. Large and in charge. His dad was a hero. That. Oh, yeah. A natural resource. Costa. And Ferguson gets the first down Ferguson at the 48-yard line. 47 and a half, actually. Miami's doing something, Mark, that it normally does not do, and that's eat the clock. It's melting the clock now. Normally, it scores very, very quickly. Miami scores. Matter of fact, the average time on 26 touchdown drives this year for Miami, 2 minutes and 25 seconds. So they get on, get it done, and get out of there. It's interesting you mentioned that statistic, Tim. Is there a point where that becomes detrimental to your defense, even though you're scoring, but you're scoring too quickly almost? Absolutely it can. That was one of the concerns of the coaches. Right here, they're really melting the clock quite nicely against Virginia Tech. Miami in rhythm. Ferguson again out to the 49-yard line. That's where his for forward progress will take him. George Del Rico making the tackle that time. Del Rico, the leading tackler, coming into the game with 88. I met his brother at the hotel yesterday and his fiance. Very nice family out of Maryland. We ran Brook, Maryland. We ran into a bunch of Virginia Tech people that have made the trip down here at this time of the year. Nice place to come in the, at this time of the year if you're from up north. We've got great fans of Virginia Tech. They trail by a pair of touchdowns with six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Cost to the pass. Lots of time, runs it now, and is brought down on Virginia Tech's side of midfield at the 49-yard line, and he'll have about six yards to go for the first down. The tackle made by Cornell Brown. Talking about how well Virginia Tech has played today despite giving up 17 points to Miami. Let me give you this little statistic. Miami has scored 30 or more points in 10 of its last 12 games. So if you're holding them to 17, and it took big plays and fluke plays to get those 17, your defense is doing pretty well. And a controversial play, that grounding call. Bad call. Costa looking at third and six. Gets rid of it quickly, intended for Green. But Green was in heavy traffic. And Couldn't time and time three. again, Mark, the defense comes up with big plays. At some point, do you think, Tim, we're going to see a quarterbacking change for Virginia Tech, but this one first? Well, we've already seen it. I want you to watch the hit after this miss. Boom! And look who it is, 41 Del Rico again. Just put a little tattoo on him, so next time he comes across the middle, he'll have his head on the swivel and be looking for big number 41. Dane threw it into punt, standing on the 37-yard line. Look at Del Rico on the sidelines. Nice punt by Pruitt. Can they get to it? No, they don't. A nice punt by Pruitt, 49 yards. You know what, anything in the air that long should have a movie on it. We'll be right back, folks. Well, Virginia Tech still unable to move the ball offensively. Tim, do you think we might see a quarterbacking change for the Hokies anytime soon? I don't think so. I think DeShazo's their guy. They're going to stick with him. I mean, Frank may do uh, something like that and go with Drucken Miller, but DeShazo's such a talent. If he gets hot, he can move you. Got to go to the big play guy. Can't find him, and now he goes up top and tries to throw it away. Good play on his part. Good play on his part. Don't take the sack. Just throw it away. Dean, you've thrown, thrown some away in your time. What's up down there? Yeah, I've thrown them away, but those that's when I was trying to hit them. That's when they looked like I was throwing them away. DeShazo will have to step up. In terms of the injury situation, tough news for the Hokies. Both defensive tackles on one side. J.C. Price is now banged up. He will try to go back in. Of course, Holland was 
carried off a while ago. So that leaves Waverly Jackson and Jim Barron as the only two healthy defensive tackles. Hey, they've been Dean, on the field a long time. Dean, we also saw Del Rico just now run into the locker room. Right. He, they've been putting ice on his calves for, I believe it's cramps. And there's a nice pass complete to Brian Still at the 38-yard line and a first down after a pickup of 19 yards. A nice ball thrown that time by Maurice DeShazo. It was thrown authoritatively, too, for one of the few times he stepped up in the pocket and actually got a good stance, stepped into the ball, and followed through and just drilled the pass. They still have to get back to Antonio Freeman. Freeman can not only get open, he can make the catch, but he's more dangerous after he makes the catch. He has two catches this afternoon, that's it. And he is lined up to the bottom of your screen. DeShazo looking the other way. Incomplete for Brian Still. You know, Maurice DeShazo knows how to deal with tough times. In particular, two years ago, he had a terrible game against West Virginia. And after the game, he walked out to the parking lot only to find that the tires on his car had been slashed. To compound matters, his father was at the game, and the criticism in the stands was so bad that his father had to leave. He says it's an experience he has never forgotten, but he turned it around. He's a tough kid. And he's got a huge daunting task ahead of him this afternoon. They trail by two touchdowns. But he fires a strike to Freeman. Antonio Freeman with a first down at the 40-yard line of the Hurricanes. There's your man. Antonio Freeman. Look at the smile on DeShazo's face. And there you are, number 80. A main man, 6'1", 187 pounds out of Baltimore Freeman. Came into the game, 26 receptions. Averages 15 yards every time he touches the ball. All-time leading receiver in his tech career. Tough body, soft hands, go to him again. Yeah, Tim, and dangerous after he catches the ball as well. And now they mix it up, going to Dwayne Thomas at the 35. You complete a couple of those passes, and all of a sudden you'll see how the defense starts to get on its heels a little bit, puts its head on the swivel, loosens things up for the running game. It goes hand in hand. Dwayne Thomas ran for over a thousand yards last year as we look at the Big East action today. Pittsburgh, West Virginia both winning along with Boston College. A huge game for the Canes next week in Syracuse, but they've got Virginia Tech to deal with first. A drop pass by Holmes. Shazo says. Man, you got to squeeze and catch that. Yeah, that's exactly right. But DeShazo now can't let that get, get him down. He has a problem with that. Paralysis through analysis. Just has to play without thinking too much about technique, worrying about guys dropping passes or bad plays. Just go, let it fly, play football. DeShazo telling me the last time I visited with him that he wanted to get into counseling after his football career. His number's not too good today. This is only the third time today Virginia Tech's been in Miami territory. He might feel like he needs some counseling. The quarterback draw. DeShazo upended at the 33, and he put it on the ground. But he's ruled down. Twan Russell made a huge hit. Brown can't cause a fumble. He said he was down. No loose ball. Russell comes up with a little bit of a stinger. This is a designed play, quarterback draw. We talked about his mobility, he's got it. But well, watch this now, this is a short tackle, wrapping the arms. Boom, Russell got a stinger. As Russell comes off the field, the ball is on the 33-yard line, and it's fourth down, they're going for it. I'd put DeShazo in the corner, let him sprint out, give him the availability of pass or run. Fourth and three. And a timeout called against Miami. Miami only had 10 guys on the field. You remember Russell came out, I don't think anybody Came back in to replace him. There's Greg McMack in the defensive coordinator. We had a great visit with him yesterday. Oh, what a great guy, fiery guy. His defense, number one in the Big East, does a great job. Something happened there, though, and he recognized it. Only 10 men on the field. Quick pickup. Had his guys call timeout to get squared away. His guys really like playing for him on defense, too. And 
He adds a personal touch, too, Tim. He was talking about a, a letter that he wrote Warren Sapp's mother, saying what a great, fine young man he is, and commending her for the job that she's done with him. I love that, Mark, when he was telling that story. You know, he's never even met Mrs. Sapp. He says, I just wanted to tell her what a fine job she did with her son. That this guy's just not a great football player. Sure, he's destined for the NFL. There he is, 76. He's going to be a number one pick. He's going to be an All-American this year, Outland Trophy candidate. Lombardi candidate. He says, but I wanted to tell her, besides all that, this guy's a solid citizen. He's a great guy to be around. A fine, intelligent young man. Don't forget, next Saturday on ABC, number five, Miami, travels north on Route 87 to be exact to get to Syracuse, New York. Number five against number 14, a Big Ten game and a Pac-10 game, all starting at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific here on ABC. And don't forget to call your cable operators for the pay-per-view games available in your area. Fourth down and three now for Virginia Tech. A definitive moment for the Hokies. Lots of time. Picked off. Lewis. The defense responds. McMackin had the right defense called. He knows it. He's ecstatic. But I don't know what DeShazo's looking at. DeShazo locks on his receivers. Watch this now. He's on him from the very beginning. Never looks away. Goes to 82 Holmes and throws right into coverage. And that ball was perfectly read by 52 Lewis. That is a terrible play by DeShazo. Locked on his receiver. Never came off. And then threw right into coverage. Lewis getting salutations from his teammates. And that was DeShazo's first interception, Tim, in four games. This is Larry Jones. Oh, man, did he put the hat down and lower the boom on Antonio Banks. Oh, baby, feel it. He brought the rhythm with him that time. Look at, this is the interception again. DeShazo's locked on him. You can see his head right on him. It's not even thrown hard. And I mean right into coverage. You know, the old joke, sometimes those guys in the other colored shirts are the only ones open. That's what happened to Lewis that time. I mean, it looked like he was intended for Lewis. Those Miami defenders, they run so quickly. Run so well to the ball. Second down and short after that nine-yard pickup by Larry Jones. He delivered a blow at the end of that run. Here he is again. The J-Man down to the 32-yard line. John Saunders, what's up with those ducks? Arizona and Oregon, and one of these two teams could be headed to the Rose Bowl, but Danny O'Neill here to Josh Wilcox, 15 yards. The Ducks take the lead, 10 to 9. So at the end of the day, there could be a four-way tie. The Ducks win. It's a three-way tie for first. Washington State faces Cal tonight. Mark. Tim, what a year for Rich Brooks up at Oregon. If the Ducks win that game, then obviously, because they haven't been to the Rose Bowl, we'll be in the driver's seat. Single back set. Larry Jones as the Canes try and grind out a little clock here. Down to the 28-yard line. Now, just under two and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. The Hurricanes lead the Hokies 17-3. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. As we look at Larry Jones, one of seven on that Hurricane roster. Now, any one time, you can have four of them on the field. Now, Chris Jones was talking about the fact that he received a letter intended for the other Chris Jones. It was from his girlfriend. It's a good thing it wasn't a Dear John letter, though. Got okay, Chris T. Jones and Chris C. Jones. Penn State still piling it on. This is Larry Jones. Down to the 23-yard line with 1.45 to play in the third quarter. Cornell Brown making the tackle that time, along with the other Brown, Ken. You keep calling the name Larry Jones. Give him a lot of credit. He stepped in today. Let me remind you what we said at the top of the telecast. Star fullback James Stewart has an ankle sprain. He's not even dressed today. He's the leading rusher with almost 500 yards. And so, you look at what they did here in this quarter, 79 yards rushing. Larry Jones doing a nice job. Replacement of James Stewart. Yeah, depth has never been a problem at Miami. He has 13 carries, 56 yards now. Third and two. 
Two tight end set, Jones. Close, extremely close to the first down. Went through the hole between the guard and the tackle on the right side of the line. And it's a first down for Miami with 105 to play now in the third quarter. Dennis Erickson winning two national titles here at Miami. He is in his sixth year as head coach, and really just now starting to put his stamp on this program. And this is one of the best teams he says that he has ever had. First and ten. Ferguson. Oh man, he lost his hat. He'll get flags for it too. That's a face mask. Didn't lose his do rag though. It's, yeah, he did. That came off too. It's a good thing his head's not in the helmet still. I thought it was for a second because all I saw was his do rag. There it is. Boy. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, assessed from the end of the run, half the distance to the goal, first down. That's one of those plays you might. One of those things you expect to see on America's Funniest Videos, Tim. Did you see that guy coming out? He was ready to hand the official his ear hole. I mean, that's, this is ridiculous. Watch this. Here he comes. Boom. There's the face mask. Just ripped it off. Lost his do-rag. Lost his hat. The earpiece fell off. Cheek protector. He took his earring off right there. Well, you know what? I don't agree with these guys wearing earrings during ball games Because one day, somebody's going to be making a tackle, and they're going to end up with an earring with an ear attached to it. Mm. Good point. I'd get that off just like all other jewelry, which is illegal to wear. Get the earrings out of there, too, because somebody's going to lose an ear. It is first down and goal to go. Jones on the carry, trying to get to the corner. And Torian Gray saved the touchdown. Nice tackle that time by Gray coming up from his free safety spot. Dean Blevins, what's going on? Well, guys, this is a banged-up, hokey defense. Earlier, Tim, we talked about Del Rico, and we thought maybe it was Cramps. Indeed, it is. He's in the locker room right now receiving an IV. Cramps in the calves. I asked the team doctors about it. Said they say he plays with a ton of emotion and energy, and he will return. But it is a banged-up, tired defense, which has been on the field a long time this afternoon. Absolutely right, all day long. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brent and Dean Blevins here in Miami, Florida. It's the end of the third quarter, and you'll see those four fingers go up from Hurricane players. They own the last period, they feel. We'll be back with more action between these two teams after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Miami Hurricane fans have had a lot to cheer about this afternoon. Their team leading 17-3 as we begin the fourth quarter of play. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins in Miami, Florida at the Orange Bowl. A three tight end formation. This is jumbo all the way. Second and goal. Ferguson. Straight down the pipe. Touchdown. He didn't lose his hat that time. Earring or not, Danielle Ferguson gets the job done. Miami has dominated time of possession in the second half. Consequently, they've dominated the game. 23 to 3 is your score now. Ferguson comes up with the big play. And again, we talked about it early. To defeat that eight-man front that Virginia Tech runs, Miami went to two tight ends. When they get down tight inside the 10, they go to three tight ends. They load up, they power in, and they're winning the ball game. Yeah, it really has been a very good offensive game plan for the Canes. That drive, eight plays, 45 yards, using a 309 on the clock. Those 45 yards and eight plays all on the ground. Offensive line firing out, big, strong, talented. He follows him right in there and comes up and over. Look at this. Boom. Makes contact at the goal line with Antonio Banks and just drives him into the end zone. Nicely done by Danielle Ferguson, the sophomore. Well, he's got the do-rag on. The earring is gone. 
Tomorrow on ABC starts with America's Funniest Videos, featuring Danielle Ferguson, maybe, and on our own. Then an all-new Lois and Clark, followed by Judith Light in a world premiere movie against their will. Women in prison, all tomorrow on ABC. You know, I talked to Judith Light last week, and she was talking about filming that special, and they did it inside a heavy security prison. She said it was some kind of unnerving. That's the streak, the Miami streak. Only death lasts forever. Washington got them earlier this year, but they started a brand new streak with Florida State. And this would be number two, should they win today. Oh, yes, it's Halloween, folks. The crazy's all out. Trick was on tech. The treat belongs to Miami. Greg Bell to kick off now for the Hurricanes. That's Brian Still standing on his own goal line. Kick comes down to the 18-yard line. That's Brian Edmonds, the starting fullback, who returns it to the 34. Mark, let me make a point here. Virginia Tech scored only two points last year against Miami. They have three here today, so that means five points in seven quarters against the Hurricanes. Virginia Tech scoring less than a point per quarter against Miami. You know, Frank Beamer has to be a little bit disappointed, maybe a lot disappointed, because this was the year that they were expecting or trying to make that next leap into the next level of college football. A win over Miami would have gone a long way towards doing that. But they're not even close so far. This is Dwayne Thomas. Smacked and jacked at the 40-yard line. Number 93, Marvin Davis, brought it all. He got help from Ray Lewis, though, too. Pat Riley's 293 pounds, 6'6". Lewis is 225, 6'1". I want to tell you something, folks. This is more than 500 pounds hitting you, and just listen to the impact. That is not me. Holmes in motion on second down, out of the shotgun. DeShazo completes the pass. And a first down at the 44-yard line to Brian Jennings, a 16-yard pickup. DeShazo threw a nice bullet that time. You know, how smothering has this defense been? How about this? That last running play by Thomas put Virginia Tech in the positive side of the ledger for the first time today. 20 carries, one yard. One yard rushing. That defense has been a picture and a portrait of domination this afternoon. DeShazo on the out pattern complete to Holmes. Holmes brought down to the 38 by Corwin Francis. Thirteen forty remaining in the game. Jermaine Holmes came into the game, the team's leading receiver. Been relatively quiet throughout the afternoon, like most of the Tech offense. Holmes from St. Petersburg, Florida. This is Tommy Edwards, and Edwards is stopped at the 38-yard line. Maybe lost a yard. Tommy Edwards is a bit of an interesting story because sure what happened with him, he got the start when Dwayne Thomas was injured for three games and really didn't enjoy the type of success that he would have liked. Became a little bit disappointed, too. He is the son of a former Tech standout, Kenny Edwards, teammate of Frank Beamers. Actually wears the same number 33 as dad wore at Virginia Tech. Third down and two. DeShazo is looking for the screen, and they had Tommy Edwards covered that time. Well, Sapp just drilled DeShazo, too. DeShazo took it right at Warren Sapp, the All-American. Thought he'd sucker him and bring him in, and then just try to drop it over his head with the adrenaline flow. Knowing he was going to get tagged, he threw it too hard. But watch this. Right now, he gets some pressure, all right? All right, so I'll move. He runs right at Sapp. Watch what happens. Boom! See ya. And I wouldn't want to be you. Not correct, that wasn't Sapp. That was Lang. Still was a good hit. Same desired effect. Fourth down and they're going for it. Really don't have much choice. Shazo downfield. Complete. Nice catch that time by Cornelius White. Brought it in with one hand. 
And it's a first down for the Hokies. Hey, this is a big time catch. You're right. Watch his hand. Now, this is not a well thrown ball. DeShazo sprints to the corner. That'll take some of the pressure off of him. Now, watch this. Number four reaches down. Boom. Pull it in. That's Cornelius White. Great catch. Big time. Watch his left hand. It's like that stick him on it. Under pressure, DeShazo down at the 39. Warren Sapp was there, and so was Pickett. Booker Pickett in on the sack. The Warren Sapp is just a junior, and the feeling is that he's out of here, that he is going pro next year. There's talk, actually, that he might be the first pick of the draft by one of the expansion teams. Great talk yesterday with Dennis Erickson, the head coach here. He says, hey, why should I even consider talking him into staying when he has the ability to come out, be a number one pick, and make an awful lot of money? He said, that's why he's here. That's why everybody goes to college. A lot of people out there, scientists, split Adams, not making as much as he's going to make in the NFL. Second and 18. Where have you seen that before? Stop me if you've seen it before. The fifth sack of the afternoon for Miami. Warren Sapp. Came into the game with five sacks. Gets another one here. Well, I tell you, that's... Uh, He's special, and what more can you say to compliment a guy than DeShazo not even waiting for the hit, just seeing Sapp coming and going down and saying, I give. No mas. You know, they say that Sapp is actually better than Russell Maryland was at the same stage of their respective careers. He's from Plymouth, Florida. We can call him the Plymouth Rock. And he just landed on DeShazo. Holmes incomplete. <laughs> Dean, what do you see from down there? Well, I tell you what, probably the same thing you do from up there in terms of this defense. When I see it, it reminds me of the old Jimmy Johnson defenses. When he and Dave Wanstad put speed on the field, you just see the ends that have turned into tackles and the linebackers and the ends. And, Timmy, you've talked about it all game long. They just fly around the football. That's the most impressive thing about this club. And a very happy defensive coordinator, too. Collie punting. It's off a high one. German is going to let this one bounce into the end zone. And there's a flag down on the field. A 46-yard punt that bounces into the end zone by Robbie Colley. You know, we had that shot of McMacken on the sidelines before the punt. What he was doing is Sapp came dancing off after the two sacks. He says, what are you doing? Get back in there. I need you in punt coverage. <laughs> Put Sapp back in. Little youthful enthusiasm. That's, that's like nope. A, I'm sorry. That's like a double Holding signal. on the receiver. That's a new on dance. The receivers. On the receivers, RG. Receiver, RG. Hey, RG. The receivers. The receivers. Hey, Terry's got it straight now. Yeah. Basic spots for 20 yards. <laughs> Looked like he was doing a new dance. <laughs> Look at Frank. Frank. Frank's bewildered. That's a great player right there, folks. You'll be seeing him playing on Sundays. Here's the hole. Now, watch this. We have holding. On the receiving team, it's a post scrimmage kick violation. It'll be assessed from the 20-yard line, first and 10. Can't wrap your arms like that. Can't push them around and wrap them and hold them. What's a coach to do, Frank Beamer asks. Warren Sapp and his posse, loving every minute of it. Mark Jones, Tim Brandt, and Dean Blevins in Miami, Florida. Ibis flexing his muscles. Why not? Hurricanes leading 24 to